our next speaker our sir is uh, pro <coughs> uh, president of current nepal ophthalmic society and uh, he is also dearest and respected my teacher and his professor in tilganga institute of ophthalmology for two decades now and uh, he's a head of oculoplastic department also thank you for a nice uh, introduction uh, good afternoon once again everyone uh, i would like once again thanks to aios especially dr namrata sharma uh, with whom we were in communication for a long time and this session was you, uh, you know the kind of the uh, suspicious whether to be or not but in the last moment we submitted uh, the our session and uh, they with respect uh, they accept our uh, the session and so we are here now uh, my talk is eyelid rehabilitation in thyroid eye disease uh, i don't have any financial interest to disclose and all the photos and videos are consented to produce here uh, we'll be discuss about management and surgical rehabilitation not in the evaluation and introduction anyway but still what is thyroid eye disease you know that in the population there are many thyroid cases are increasing uh, maybe due to the diagnose properly nowadays and hypothyroidism is the most common and then proceed by hypothyroidism and euthyroid but thyroid eye disease can occur in any kind of thyroidism and surprisingly in this part of the indian subcontinent the thyroid eye disease is not so severe as we are seeing in the western hemisphere and once the active stage has gone thyroid eye disease convert to the uh, passive stage or burned out stage where the different disfiguring uh, changes will occur in periocular region so that they come to us for the restore restore uh, surgery to be performed by ophthalmologists or ophthalmologic units the treatment option we had is non surgical and surgical and non surgical technique there is a magical drug named teprotimumab which was approved in january 2020 by fda and this is a, a one of the uh, very fantastic drug available in the western countries but still the availability and affordability in countries like nepal and india is still questionable uh this is a monoclonal uh, therapy which inhibits insulin like growth factor uh in the orbital fibroblasts and adipocytes which are the responsible ex exactly for thyroid eye disease in the orbit the response is so quick that uh, in the first and second second and third dose they start to respond and usually the long lasting action and there is very less chance of recurrence with this drug and the delivery method is that every 3 weeks the infusion is given in eight cycles altogether 24 weeks and the second dose and third dose in six and nine weeks they start to regress not only stop the progress this is the fantastic effect that it start to regress the pathogenesis of thyroid eye disease and the cost is very high if you are not insured even in the western country the uh, the affordability is very difficult uh, this is the slide i borrowed from my colleague ramon de plus he is the expert in thyroid eye disease uh, working in los angeles and the right hand side you see the the patient in the left eye there is a remarkable lead retraction and proptosis after the one dose of tepeza that is a trade name for the teprotimumab after 3 4 weeks after the first infusion they start to regress the exophthalmos as well as the lead retraction after completion of the doses in 24 weeks uh, almost completely resolve the lead retraction and exophthalmos in the left eye in the right left hand side you see the her patient before and after the uh, administration of the teprotimumab these are my patient in the burn out stage of thyroid eye disease where you can see remarkable exophthalmos severe lead retraction and different uh, direction deviated exop uh, i mean the uh, strabismus so which make they are socially uh handicapped uh, and as well as the disfiguration make their uh, very much difficult to uh, live in the normal style in the upper eyelid retraction uh, there are two methods to resist the retractor of uh, superior palpebral levator palpebral superior and muller muscle or full thickness graded blepharotomy these are the choice for the uh, upper eyelid retraction recession procedure in the graded uh blepharotomy technique which was described first by uh, leo kornieff in 1990s 
from Netherlands. What he does that uh, the lead crease approach give the incision suborbicularis uh, incision, uh, then go to the uh, levator uh, recession, leaving the uh, stump of the conjunctiva in the central to maintain the control of the upper eyelid. And this is very promising and is graded. If the severely retracted lead, it can be completely uh, things, I mean, they uh, do the blepharotomy. If it is mild, then you can judge in the table how the results are coming. Uh, blepharotomy can be combined with the blepharoplasty. You know that in thyroid eye disease, there is a puffy eyelid due to the subbrow fat pads uh, infiltration as well as excess lead, which can be removed during the blepharotomy surgery. Now come to the lower eyelid retraction. Lower eyelid retraction is responsible by uh, lower eyelid retractor muscle capsule particle fascia, where uh, you see here, here, this is the tarsus, and just beneath the tarsus, there is a spacer has placed between the inferior border of the tarsus and inferior retractor capsule palpebral fascia, which would elevate the lead toward the limbus. So this is one of my one of my patient whom the burned out thyroid eye disease, uh, burned out thyroidism with the thyroid eye disease, and there is a remarkable lead retraction and exophthalmos after the lead everted with the traction suture with Dumas retractor conjunctival anesthesia with infiltration given and they're leaving the four millimeter of tarsus from the eye uh, eyelashes then given the incision in the tarsus and subtarsal in dissection is carrying out here very nicely you see that it is very easy to dissect the subtarsal because of there is a very loose adhesion between the tissues and now the tarsus and conjunctival graft has been harvested very nicely and we keep in the saline for the time. So one millimeter of lead retraction can be corrected with two millimeter of spacer. Here he has got about three millimeter of retract, uh, lead retraction. That's why about six millimeter of uh, spacer is needed in my case. Now come to the uh, eyelid recession procedure. After giving the lead crease uh, in season, then sub uh, uh, this uh, fast, uh, sub uh, capsular palpebral fascial incision, you reach to the conjunctiva and Mueller tissue where you extend the air incision toward the medial extremely, and in the same way, you extend your incision toward the lateral side of the eyelid. And to be ensure that the lateral horn of the levator palpebral superior should be in size because this is the muscle part which is responsible for lateral flaring, lifting the eyelid laterally up and leaving the central hinge of conjunctiva to maintain the control of the upper eyelid and then close the eyelid into two layers. Because I started to close in two layers, I had some of the cases having the own gap. And once own gap is there, cornea is directly visible like it's a buttonhole. That's why you nicely close orbicularis in one layer and skin in another layer. Now come to the lower eyelid retraction correction. Uh, giving the traction suture here with four vicryl. Do I have two minutes only? Yeah. Oh, so, so quick. Uh, and you see the anatomical landmark of inferior border of the tarsus and giving uh, the incision in the inferior border of the tarsus here. And now you do the subconjunctival dissection nicely and identify the inferior retractor muscle capsule palpebral fascia and uh, i recall that we have harvested very nicely the tarsal conjunctival graft from the upper eyelid from the same patient the spacer could be the different material uh, we can use uh, this is the capsule palpebral fascia you see the whitish band and the graft is now placing properly as a spacer between two structure inferior border of the tarsus and superior border of the capsule palpebral fascia and we suture that with six of vehicle very nicely here. And the spacer could be nasal cartilage, ear cartilage, or donor sclera, or heart pellet, or uh, tarsus from the upper eyelid, outer lower tarsus. It is sutured and placed very nicely in the fornix, you see, and release the traction suture. Keep the frost suture for three days, uh, just to keep in the position. And you'll see that yeah, it is very nicely placed in the inferior fornix and keep for this. 
And this is the post-operative one-week picture where the lead retraction has remarkably reduced and we didn't do anything from the exophthalmus. Now come to some of the successful stories. This is my very first case in 2005 done for the burned out case of thyroid disease and where I had a hard pellet graph for the lady and post-operatively found the satisfactory result in the same way. In 2010, right eye lead retraction was corrected. After eight years, the same thing happened in the left eye and came from US to get the treatment with us. And here you go, another case is, and where I uh, combined with the blepharoplasty with the fat reduction, and after, so after successful surgery, you see the inferior retractor is still be there. And in summary, I would like to summarize that the rejuvenation or uh, restoration of the appearance uh, normal appearance of the patient is very important to restore the his or her normal life in the society and which can be done with customized approach for the individual patient. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir. It was a really nice presentation with very important topic. And um, about, and with, there were such uh, beautiful videos uh, and it made me recall my residency days uh, where I used to um, assist you on such cases.